Tobacco Workshop? Yeah, come on in, have a seat. How are you guys doing this morning? Good? Good? Great, thank you guys all for coming. How about we just get started? My name is Hannah, and today we're going to be learning about how we can prevent an illegal tobacco sale, especially to minors. Not only is it illegal to sell tobacco to minors, but it's also the wrong thing to do. It's important that we make the Native American youth aware that there's a difference between traditional and commercial tobacco. While traditional tobacco is sacred, commercial tobacco has many addictives that are very bad and not found in traditional tobacco. So it's important that we make them aware of this. Today we're going to learn how to better understand the law and ideas that you can use to prevent making an illegal tobacco sale, especially to minors. It can be challenging to identify a minor, and it can even be more challenging to refuse to sell to a minor. But particularly, it can be really challenging if the minor becomes upset that you will not sell to them. Sometimes the store is really busy or the customers become really demanding, but it's important to realize not to sell tobacco to minors. There are many challenges when you're selling tobacco products as a sales clerk. Can anyone think of any other difficulties you would have when selling tobacco? Some minors might have forgotten their IDs or don't have one. Their ID could be invalid. Parents or older friends could buy for them. Or you may not be able to tell how old they are, like if they're wearing makeup or something. Yeah, these are all great ideas. Thank you guys. Um, these are really all things that could happen. Sometimes you might feel pressure to sell tobacco to people because you really don't know what's going on or depending on the situation, but don't sell tobacco to minors. Remember, if you do sell tobacco to minors, you can face serious charges and fines and you can also lose your job. Make sure that you aren't making an illegal sale by mistake. The federal government requires that anyone who looks under the age of 27 must be ID'd. Remember, you must be 18 to be able to purchase tobacco products. So what about items that aren't actually tobacco, like rolling papers or lighters? Oh, that's a great question. So what do you guys think exactly are tobacco products? Cigarettes, cigars, chewing tobaccos, tobacco, vape pens. Another good example would also be snuff. We can see that rolling papers, lighters, matches, and other tobacco-related accessories are um, sometimes cannot be sold to minors because it's illegal in specific states. In South Dakota, however, you cannot sell cigars, cigarettes, e-pens, e-cigarettes, um, any, basically any of these things to minors because it's illegal. So how do we know if someone is 18 years old? Just ask for an ID. Okay, well, what are some acceptable forms of an ID? Driver license, tribal ID, military ID. Yeah, these are all great examples. Um, you can also use immigration card or a state ID card. Um, but what is something that all these IDs have in common? They're all government issued. Yes, absolutely. Yes, they have to be government issued, they have to have a photo, and they also have to have your date of birth. Um, these are all things that a valid ID needs. Now, what if I came in to buy tobacco and I had an ID that was older expired? Would you guys sell the tobacco to me? No. All right, does anyone know if an ID should be valid? Why do you think that is? It could be a similar looking sibling. Absolutely, that's a really great point. Say that I turn 18 and I tell the DMV that I lost my ID, when really I just gave it to my little sister who looks a lot like me. That's a really good point of how um, an ID could still be valid. What if we're not sure? Maybe you can look at other descriptions on ID, like the height, weight, and eye color. Or you could ask for another form of ID. These are all great ideas. You see, these would all work. A person who is using a fake ID will probably not have a secondary form of identification. So if they don't have one, refuse the sale. Checking the ID properly is really important. Making sure that there are signs letting customers know that you are going to ID them will ultimately deter customers who are trying to use fake IDs. But what if the customer steals the tobacco, throws the money on the counter, and then runs away? <laughs> um, call the boss or call the police. Yeah, I try to remember what they look like or what they were driving so you can tell your boss or the police. Yes, exactly. You guys are not law enforcement. All you are supposed to do is tell your supervisor and then tell the police. All right, great job, guys. Well, how about we watch a video real quick? Hello. Hello. Is this not for you? Uh, can I get a pack of cigarettes? Can I see your ID? Uh, I don't have it on me. I bought them here before. Can you just give them to me? Not for me. The law says I can't roll. Come on, man. Screw the law. You're making me late. Sorry, I can't see you without making. All right, what do you guys think happened?
in there. It seems like the customer got mad because the clerk was rude. How you handle situations is important. Rather than telling the customer that the law says no, you might try to explain more politely. I'm sorry, I cannot sell you tobacco without an ID, or I could get a fine, or even lose my job. I'm, if you do this, you show that you're following the rules rather than just telling the customer no. And they're more likely to be less upset if you're just explaining politely to them. Harsh words like, I can't, often make people angry and react irrationally, so they can get defensive or think that you are just choosing not to sell them tobacco. Hello. Hi. Is this all for you? Oh, uh, can I get a pack of cigarettes? Can I see your ID? Uh, I don't have it on me. Can you just give it to me? I've gotten it here before. I'm sorry. If you don't have your ID, I can't sell them to you. Otherwise, I'll get fined. They're pretty strict about that. I can hold on to them while you go and get your ID, though. No, that's fine. I'll get them. Okay, you see, that time it went a lot smoother. Always remember to be polite and use good customer service. Sometimes friends might try to pressure you. Don't be persuaded into selling tobacco because you could lose your job or even be fined. In South Dakota, it is not only illegal for a minor to purchase tobacco, it's also illegal for them to have possession of tobacco. If a merchant sees that a minor does have tobacco, they can detain the minor and call the police. If they knew that, minors might not want to purchase or have tobacco on them because they realize that they could get in severe trouble for it. Hey lady. Yeah. Can you buy me some cigarettes while you're in there? Yeah, what kind? Uh, camels. I got money. Alright. Thanks. Yep. know that it is illegal to buy tobacco for minors. I think you guys kind of know what to expect now. Keeping tobacco for minors is the right thing to do. Remember to always keep a customer service attitude. The store stays in business because of the products that it sells. If you make customers angry by refusing to sell to them, they may become angry and not want to shop there anymore and refuse to come. So by refusing sales, they might not come back. But remember to always do it in a polite manner. How about we do a little recap of what we've learned today? So what are some tobacco products? Cigars, cigarettes, pipe tobacco, chew, e-cigarettes. And don't forget... Snuff. There we go! <laughs> when a customer comes in the store to purchase tobacco, what should you ask yourself? Do they look younger than 27? If not, ask for an ID. Do they have a valid ID? Like a state one? Or a tribal ID, military ID, passport, immigration card? Yeah, and what should you guys look for on these IDs? A photo, a state seal. Be sure the description matches the person. An expiration date. You have to make sure the ID is not tampered with. All right, and what do we do if the ID is tampered with? Ask for another form of ID. If they don't have one, then refuse sale. And make sure to do it politely. Great, and what should you look for on an ID? A date of birth. And how old does someone have to be to purchase tobacco? 18, make sure their birth date is today at least 18 years ago. Or you used one of those calendars shown today's date 18 years ago. Great, it looks like you guys know exactly how to keep tobacco out of the hands of minors. Great job! Thank you from the Suddenly Coalition.